Hello, Jeannie Heiser. How are you this afternoon? Hi, Tammy. I think this is the first time I've seen you uh, jump on to my afternoon lessons. Welcome, welcome. Hopefully you and your family are doing well during the COVID quarantine. Let's we'll let a few more jump on here. Today we're in Daniel chapter 5. Um, Jeannie, I'm doing well. Thank you. We're doing great. Um, you know, day by day, taking it in as we can. Um, you know, still, still making our way through all of this COVID uh, crisis craziness. But we're doing pretty good. Definitely not starving. Definitely doing pretty well. God is good every day. We are in Daniel chapter 5. Chapter 5, verses 13 through 21 today. Hi, Terry. Another friend from high school. Thanks for jumping on and joining us. Hopefully you're doing well. I think this is uh, another first time seeing have you on with us today. All of my lessons that I've been teaching from the book of Revelation and uh, the book of Daniel, they're all up on my YouTube channel. If you're interested in just catching up on those, they're on RJ Rizzi. Just look for um, uh, the background is an anchor, uh, kind of pastel colors, an anchor back there. And you can find all the um, lessons that I've taught on the book of Revelation. And now on the book of Daniel as well, if you want to catch up. Um, so they're all there. I do that also for my congregation. Um, we're having those put up there for people so that they can catch up as well. So we are in the book of Daniel, chapter 5, looking at verses 13 through 21. Grab your Bibles if you want to grab a hard copy or grab your smartphone. Maybe you have a Bible uh, app on your phone. Grab that. And um, I'm using... New King James, if you follow along, but if you have a different preference, that's no problem. Grab what you like. Grab what you like. Um, follow along. I'm going to begin with prayer, so we'll prepare our hearts with that. Heavenly Father, thank you that we can meet together like this and study your word. We do pray that as believers, you would strengthen us each day to follow after you. Uh, help us to be uh, ready and willing to serve you in whatever way we can. Help us to reach people who have yet to know Christ as Savior. I pray that we can uh, help more and more people uh, know, know Him like we do. Uh, so many people have questions today. So many questions about why things are taking place the way they do. Well, you're, the Bible has answers, and uh, hopefully we as believers will read what the Bible says, understand what it means, and then look to apply it uh, for our own lives, and then look to parallels that are in it for, for the days we're living in. Thank you for everything that we uh, learn from you. In Christ we pray. Amen. So we have Daniel chapter 5, verses 13 through 21. I'm going to start with a question, though. How many of you watch uh, legal shows on TV from time to time? I love Blue Bloods. Uh, Friday nights, uh, Tom Selleck and his clan there, uh, the Reagan family. I used to be a huge fan of Law & Order, uh, but have not really been up into the series that much. And back when the when I, I preached this series uh to the people here at first baptist it was 2010 so i think things were winding down for law and order i think S, svu is still on i catch a show now and then but one thing about the way many of the crime dramas are played out we see that the testimony of a witness is very important to the outcome of the trial the defense would like nothing better than to discredit the, the witnesses of their opponent so that the jury will, will has some reasonable doubt as to the guilt of the defendant. The opposition relies upon the credibility of a witness to provide enough evidence to demonstrate guilt. And so they go back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> Thanks, Grace. I love law shows. 
Um, so there's this this tug of war between uh, the defense and, and uh, you know the the opposition. In the case of Daniel, the Lord desires for Daniel to be a well-established believer in the context of a, of, of a pagan world, the unbelievers. And in this portion of Daniel's, the credibility of his testimony is being tested. And he is asked once again to provide insight that only God could possibly provide what a dream is all about. In this way, uh, we can... In this, we can see that we might be tested in quite similar ways today. A lot of people would ask us as believers, what's going on? Is this the end times? What What is God really doing here? Well, when we study the word of God, we can have answers. Daniel chapter 5, let's look at verses 13 through 16 to begin with. Then Daniel was brought in before the king, Belshazzar, uh, just to remind you. The king spoke and, Daniel, and said to Daniel, are you that Daniel? who is one of the captives from Judah, whom my father, the, the king, brought from Judah. I have heard of you, that the Spirit of God is in you, and that and that light, and understand, and excellent, I'm sorry, excuse me, and that light, and understand, and excellent wisdom are found in you. Now the wise men, the astrologers, have been brought in before me, and that, that they should read this writing, that writing on the wall that we talked about yesterday. Uh, this writing to make known to me its interpretation, but they could not give the interpretation to this thing. They couldn't understand it. And I have heard of you that you can give interpretations and explain enigmas. Now, if you can read the writing and make known to me its interpretation, you shall be clothed with purple and have a chain of gold around your neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. There it is, that, that attempt to bribe him and, and reward him. The urgency of the moment is seen here in this text. Daniel is deliberately called upon to come before this young king, Belshazzar. His, his grandfather was King Nebuchadnezzar. And I know he's referred to as his father, but that's how the Old Testament was. They referred to the, the previous uh, um, men in the family as their fathers. The king has a plan, and he has a goal to get, the bo get to the bottom of this great mystery. There's a hand that reached out from the wall in, in this great room, and it wrote a message to him. And so he wants to find out the, you know, the message for, of this mystery that the astrologers, they couldn't find the answer to because it's from God, really, and they don't have any connection to God. They, of course, could not discern what the handwriting on the wall meant because they had no relationship with the author. If you want to know things about the author of the Bible, you have to have a relationship with him. For Daniel being brought into the very presence of the king, this was really extraordinary since the king seemed so self-reliant in the past. He was full of himself, pretty, pretty cocky guy. He was a self-centered young man who loved himself and thought he had all the answers. And you know the type, a lot of young people do. When, when we were a young man, we thought we could rule the world. A teenager, maybe still, when, when he was uh, at this point in time, uh, who thinks they know more about something than the adults around them. And that's how the king was acting, like he knew everything. Uh, but this occasion is really different. It's a very personal situation for this king. There's a message that God Almighty wrote to him personally. He wants to know the answers. Right now, the only, the only one left to call upon is someone his grandpa used to talk about. Someone who has a reputation for believing in the God of Israel and that this faith could, his faith could not be shaken. That's how we should be in our faith, with our faith of Jesus Christ, that when we place our faith in him, we should not be moved, that we should stand firm in our beliefs. Today, the king would pay attention, or on that day, the king would pay attention to what Daniel has to say because he has a high regard for Daniel. Daniel's got a great reputation. His testimony has gone on before him. Of course, it may be that he, he used up all of his other choices by now. All the Chaldeans, the soothsayers, the, you know, those who, who uh, you know, his magicians, they couldn't come up with an answer. So I guess Daniel's last on the list. Too many people that you and I meet in life are nearing their final choices. They have many questions, but few real answers to the challenges they, that they face. And you know, it, it, it seems 
pretty silly to me as a believer that people leave God out of it until their last resort. God should always be the first one to go to if they want answers to, to these questions. So who will they turn to when they run out of choices? The people that we know that say that they want to wait until some other day to trust in Christ. Who will they turn to when they run out of choices? That you And you might be the person that they come to with their concerns. So be ready to have an answer. Daniel has been chosen by God to bear witness to the kings of Babylon, a very special place. Nebuchadnezzar and now Belshazzar recognize something that only God can apply to any one of us. The reputation of Daniel is legend. It's awesome. People... People have said that the Spirit of God resides with Daniel, and the king was recognizing this. The word for God here is Ella. The Aramaic is Elohim, meaning the supreme God. This is what Belshazzar was saying, that he recognizes that the power of the supreme God is in Daniel. An interesting choice of words from this pagan king who believed in so many false gods, you know, the gods for comfort and salvation, and yet none of them were going to provide him any kind of answers. Daniel was chosen to bear the truth to this pagan society. He brought to the, he brought to the light the illumination of reason, the brightness of true wisdom from the Lord God himself. It was as if the light came on in the mind of the king uh, as Daniel comes into the room, like a light bulb uh, 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 came on in, in his brain. Such an experience for him. But the, the countenance of Daniel was not of this world. This was a type of wisdom and skillful, skillful understanding beyond human terms. Um, it confounds those of the world. It confounded e even the king there and his people. They couldn't understand it. And maybe, as you, uh, uh, as a believer, may share your testimony and understanding of, of the word of God, maybe the people around you will not understand where, where your wisdom comes from. It only comes from God. In verse 15, there is something important to observe, that there is a written record of God's communication on the wall before the king. You know, it's very important that we see there in verse 15, now the wise men, the astrologers, have been brought before me, that they should read this <clears throat> writing and make known to me its interpretation. There it is. The king recognizes it, and those astrologers, they were trying to understand it. So there's that written record. It's certification that God's presence is there before the king and that he has a desire to offer direction to give him something specific at that time. You know, God is trying to reach everybody in the world, every unbeliever, every person who says they're an agnostic or atheist. And God is using you and I to testify of God's greatness. But there's the word of God that testify uh, that testifies of God's wisdom and greatness and all the answers are in the Bible. There's also uh, Romans chapter 1. God can be seen. Even, it says, his invisible attributes are clearly seen even by those who are perishing. Daniel is in the right place at the right time. He offers some exegetical ex ex expertise that the Babylonian wise men could never do because Daniel can read the writing. He knows what it means. Daniel is able to give an interpretation because God gives him the ability, gives him the answers. Daniel's discernment is sharpened and he could discern what is naturally hidden to the unsaved person who has no, no idea about really following God. See, Daniel has, has been placed in this position by God. He allowed him to be there and used uh, by God to untie this, the knot of this particular riddle for the king. Let's look at verses 17 through 21. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, let your gifts be for yourself so you can keep your gifts and give your rewards to someone else. Give them to another. Yet I, I will read the, the writing to the king and make known to him the interpretation. O king, the most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar your father a kingdom and majesty, glory and honor. And because of the majesty that he gave him, all peoples, nations, and languages trembled and feared before him. Whomever he wished, he executed. Whomever he wished, he kept alive. Whomever he wished, he set up. And whomever he wished, he put down. 
But when his heart was lifted up and his spirit was hardened with pr in pride, he was deposed from his kingly throne and they took his glory from him. Then he was driven from the sons of men. His heart was made like the beasts and his dwelling was, was with the wild donkeys. They fed him with grass like oxen and his body was wet with the dew of heaven till he knew that the Most High God rules in the kingdom of men and appoints it, appoints over it whom he chooses. Well, Daniel doesn't tell him exactly the handwriting on the wall just yet. Daniel's response was just as intense as the king's request. Daniel wants this king to know the power of God. He really wants to reach him, really, with the message of eternal life. He readies himself to give an account, as he declares for those who can hear, that he refuses the gifts from the king. He's telling before all of the king's court, I don't want any kind of reward for what I'm about to tell you. In the most respectful tone, Daniel addresses the king, and tells him that the gift is really a bad idea and that he actually considers it a bribe. Daniel, because of his special relationship with God, is not immune to temptation, but does not surrender to it. It could have been easy to say, I'll take your gifts. But he didn't want to be tainted by all of that. He will not accept the gift for doing what he ought to because of the calling of God on his life. Daniel tells the king that it is because of the, of the Most High God, the same title in the Aramaic used in verse 14 to address God, indicates Daniel's intention to give glory and recognition to God and God alone. Belshazzar is to recognize what his grandfather did as well, that it was the God of Israel that allowed for him to have the position of authority in the first place. That's the subtle message to Belshazzar. Belshazzar, the only reason you're on the throne is because God allows it. But what purpose does the Lord have in preparing people to be in a specific place and time? In Nebuchadnezzar's case, the people of the Babylonian Empire would have had an, an option um, of who... Uh, of who they would serve. And we all have that option. They would have uh, um, uh, an opinion uh, that he, of who Nebuchadnezzar was and what he was capable of. Would they follow him? Is he a strong leader? Is he a good leader? They knew that he had potential to be ruthless and cruel and that there may have been times when they saw his, his uh, caring side. But because the Lord had ordained his position as leader of the nation, he was given dignity and authority even when he didn't deserve it. Nations cowered in his presence because he commanded a vast, powerful army. One lesson for us to learn from Nebuchadnezzar is that while God prepares people to serve in a specific time and place, we do not always know what that might encompass. God may have a work for you to do tomorrow, and that could change the next day. He might uh, re-equip you for your work in ministry day by day to give you a, a new vision. Maybe it's only to reach one other person with the message of the gospel, but God does equip. We may face being moved in a way similar to that of King Nebuchadnezzar when his mind was taken from him. He was left without reasoning and he had no free will left in him. He became like an animal eating grass. Because he had not listened to the warning of Daniel to repent, his heart was hardened. Excuse me, and he was overpowered by his own pride, and pride is a dangerous thing. His dignity was gone as he ate like an animal because he would not surrender to the very will of God. And sometimes I believe that people can be brought so low that they will act animalistic. He had chosen not to use his gifts, his strengths that are, are and abilities that are, are weaved within the fabric of a being that are really designed by God because God creates all of us. He had, chosen not, he had chosen not to use those gifts to serve God and selfishly did what was right in his own eyes and his court. And his court, he wanted to be uh, worshipped rather than simply, um, you know, teach them and, and help them. And his reign was cut short because he chose to follow after his own desires. There is a reason that God prepares people to respond to his calling. And when he does, he calls out to people. He prepares everybody. Again, I'll, I'll repeat it. He wants none to perish. He wants all to come to salvation. 
this is part of, of what I believe always, that God wants everyone in the world to know him. And God wanted Nebuchadnezzar to know him. He, wants, he wanted Belshazzar to know him. He wants our unsaved neighbors to know him personally. So there's a purpose for all people to accept the, the gift of God's grace and come into the family of God for discipleship, for fellowship, for worship of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What's our takeaway from today? First one is God prepares his people for a specific time and place. God has prepared you for a specific work, your work in ministry. That is what you're being equipped for. You go to church, um, your pastor, your teacher, your, your, your leader, um, he is teaching you, uh, biblically speaking, book of Ephesians says, pastor teachers are to be there to equip the saints for ministry. That's what church is all about. That is what the gathering for worship each Sunday is all about, that you are being equipped to do the work of God. Well, what is the work and will of God? It's to reach people with the gospel message. Number two, our, our second takeaway is that God provides his people with specific gifts uh, for certain areas of service. Every one of us has a strength and a gift to be used for the glory of God. Yes, we all have our weaknesses, and we are not perfect people. We are so far from perfect, but God gives everyone a gift to be used to honor and glorify him. What is your gift? What are your strengths? What are your skills to be used to honor and glorify God? I'll tell you, one of my greatest weaknesses is woodworking. I'm horrible at it. And my wife has reminded me over and over and over again that I'm even worse than a caveman when it comes to woodworking. Right, honey? Yeah, yeah. she's over here laughing at me, but I know it's true. I'm horrible at it. But there are men, there's one man in our, in our congregation. He is so gifted at, at, at woodworking. He makes things, he makes it look easy. <laughs> but I'm so blessed to be able to have that kind of skill among the body of Christ here in Farmington. Well, the lesson for us is that God prepares us. He is preparing for us works to do for him. And he appoints the time and the place when each of us can use those skills and those gifts. What will you do for God today, tomorrow, and in the days ahead? We can refuse to follow him or we can surrender to his leading and glorify him. It is God who provides every gift and opportunity so that we might live our lives uh, with the joy of glorifying him. What has God been speaking to you about? Has he spoken to your heart about how and when you will serve him or where you will serve him? Has he given you a specific gift to use to strengthen and encourage your brothers and sisters in Christ? May we have the mind of Christ in us and keep us focused on the accomplishments uh, that he has for us because he's got so much for us to do in this crazy fallen world uh, in these days when people are just really not understanding what's going on. I pray today is a blessing from Daniel chapter 5. Uh, tomorrow, well, I think there's more to this that we need to learn about. What is that handwriting on the wall all about? Well, Daniel has a, a message for King Belshazzar. Please continue to pray for First Baptist in Farmington. We'll continue to pray for you and your families, for all of our brothers and sisters everywhere in the world. We pray for persecuted Christians everywhere, wherever they may be, uh, because uh, there are other countries who really don't have any kind of freedoms that we have. So if you have a question or want to make a comment, do private message me. You can make it right here if you like, like but private message me. I'd love to have uh, conversations, answer questions, or just catch up on all times. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, again, we thank you so much for the blessing of your holy word. Father, you are um, going to use us. You have appointed us. You're equipping us to do the work that you've called us to. What are we being called to right now, each and every one of us? What are our skills? What are our strengths? What is it that you've gifted us with that we could use to reach people with the message of Christ? Lord, we thank you so much for calling us together uh, at this time for these lessons. I pray that they would be meaningful and help us uh, to be stronger in our walk with you. Thank you for everything you give to us. In Christ we pray. Amen. Blessings to everybody, and we'll see you tomorrow. Have a great rest of your day.